Okay, we're going to get started with the alumni panel. Uh, welcome. Thank you all for participating. Um, before I get started, I just want to remind you all that before you leave, we're going to have you uh, scan out so that way you can get uh, credit for this event. Um, and also, before I uh, start letting the panel introduce themselves, I want to let you know that uh, how this is going to work. Um, you guys are here. If you have any questions um, as far as you know, how they got started, what do they do, um, any questions that you may have, this is your opportunity to do that. Um, so I will turn the floor over to you guys once they introduce themselves. Um, and if there is, if everyone's going to be shy, which I have a feeling that's just going to how it's going to be, considering no one's in the middle. But um, I will um, ask some questions that maybe that way lighten y'all up and then um, definitely take advantage of this time because this is really for the benefit of you all. Um, and so you should take advantage of that. But um, I'll go ahead with Tommy Novak. He's with Coin um, Bullion. Usually introduce yourself. Yes. And, um, um, hey, my hey. name is Tommy Novak. I'm director of sales at Universal Coin and Bullion. I've uh, been there 17 years, graduated from LU. Uh, back in 2000 and um, graduated with a finance or finance as Swirlo would say uh, and management information systems degree uh, from Lamar and um, uh, I guess that's my introduction okay, that works. Okay. I'll just cut it off right there and move on to that hi how y'all doing y'all look alive I'm excited to be here my name is Dalen Turner. Um, I uh, am affiliated with JK Chevrolet Subaru. I'm the general manager of the Subaru store. And um, like my fellow gentlemen to the left here, I graduated from LU uh, in 2007. So I didn't get to see the football until you guys you know, probably didn't take advantage of that. But I did come back and I got a chance to see it. But we're excited about that this year. It's going to be a pretty good season. Um, long story short, with, about me, uh, I graduated with a finance degree and I got a chance to um, get some real world experience while simultaneously going to school here. I sold cars and um, I did pretty good, uh, apparently, because I got promoted. Um, <laughs> so I, I basically sold anywhere from 12 to 15, so I kind of hung out with some of the guys that were the top uh, producers at the store, and I was, you know, getting into work around two or three o'clock, and that was simply because of some of my work ethic abilities, I think. And I uh, graduated with three point five GPA and the major of finance. So um, glad to be here. Um, if you guys have any questions for me, I'd be more than happy to uh, filter any of those as it progresses. And any questions after the fact, I'd be more than happy to help you. My name is Mike Halpin. I'm the branch manager with Wells Fargo Advisors here in Beaumont. I've uh, been in the industry for 25 years. Back here, I'm from Niederland. Back here, the last three. I will not tell you what year I graduated from this place. Uh, but a lot of you were not born at that time. But some of them, like we were talking about, the couches out there at the Setzer Center are the same when I was here that you are sitting on right now. Just keep that in mind. Next time you want to take a nap. Yeah, uh, I look forward to helping y'all out. One of the things that I have seen as I have done many interviews from Lamar as well as Texas Tech is that most of the uh, people that are graduating come in and they fail miserably at interviewing and preparing for that. So that's why I'm more than happy as well as the other guys want to give back to the college and want to help y'all in any way that we can as far as prepare for your future. So we're welcome. Okay, so at this time, I'm going to go ahead and um, turn it to you guys. Uh, you can uh, have a question for maybe a particular uh, alum, or you can have it for the whole panel. So, does anybody have any questions? Or we can ask you questions. Oh, wow, okay. Go ahead. I was going to ask for you all about the day-to-day -day activity. Well, for us, we do uh, precious metals uh, over the phone. We sell over the phone. And um, we sell silver, gold, and platinum both in coins and in bars uh, and rare coins. And um, the salespeople, uh, we're, we have a very comfortable, although I'm dressed in a suit today, we, we, uh, we have a very comfortable atmosphere uh, because you are over the phone. We sell to um, every, pretty much every state in the U.S. plus 
we have some international clients, but uh, being able to ship uh, internationally is tough. So, um, you know, the people that we do have internationally normally make arrangements to get their precious come into the states and get their precious metals. But what it consists of is we have a computer, phones, and um, we market for customers, and those customers come in, and then we call them, or they call in for something that we have um, as a uh, loss leader, something like uh, Silver American Eagles that we have at cost, and they call in for that, and then we outbound call to sell them other products. And that's the normal normal thing over there. Well, <clears throat> my areas of responsibility as a GM um, include the sales of new cars, the advertising and marketing that goes on with that, used cars, uh, the sales and advertising and marketing piece that goes on with that, buying, going to auctions, that kind of thing. And then service, we uh, service them too, so customers are bringing vehicles in for regular maintenance, like oil changes, the tire rotation, or bigger problems, you know, uh, check engine light, that kind of stuff, uh, we take care of, and then also parts. So people that need parts, they want to buy them retail or collision centers locally, they might get some Subarus in and they want to get some work done and they buy them wholesale from me. So I oversee the entire operation and um, that's, that's pretty much what my day-to-day -day deal is all about, you know, making customers happy and smile and keep the thing moving and growing market share. So that's what it's all about. I had the fun job of dealing with the regulatory environment that is such fun to do as far as over the last five years. I oversee the branch over the financial advisors to make sure that we do stay uh, in compliance with the regulatory environment. Um, <coughs> wash the windows to the toilet, but that's only twice a week. Really just oversee the operations of the branch. Okay. Do you have any answers? I'll be accurate. I think it's okay. You got the same question. I have a question. How many of you guys are actually going into banking after you get graduate? And am I getting a lot of marketing or business majors in this room? Who do we have in here? Finance? Business. 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 General business. How many people are going into the financial arena? You got one? Okay. Um, well, that's the part that I left out. Um, I actually did do that when I graduated from Lamar. I went uh, and worked for J.P. Morgan Chase as a licensed banker. So I got my Series 6. still going to Lamar for my degree and um, I had friends that were doing it and they told me about it and I went and interviewed and got the job and um, you know after I graduated had some thoughts of doing other things in the financial services industry and um, decided to study and uh, moved on up in, in the business. Just kind of fell into it? Kind of fell into it.
has nothing to do with cars. It has everything to do with people. And so learning, you know, how to deal with people and taking care of people and, and putting that customer service piece into it came from, believe it or not, experiences I had working in the mall, you know, or working at other, you know, job opportunities that I had coming in high school and college. So, um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, how I got into it was, you know, I saw the money, I saw that opportunity, it did, I did very well as a college student, and I was able to save, you know, some significant dollars while I was in school, and then I love people, so I just, you know, took that and put that together, and here I am, you know. Um, I went into different parts of the business, I, I was a used car manager for a little while, the internet director, I did work in finance for a little bit, so I, I just kind of worked around the whole dealership, and now, you know, I just I enjoy it, it's what I do, so. When I was about 12 years old, I used to watch the uh, read the paper, and they always had stock quotes in there. And I always found this one stock called Essex Chemical. I don't know why, but I read, looked at it every day. My father finally bought me three shares of it, and so I, I like the market ever since. I did not go directly into that. It's hard to start off with initially, so I worked for Southwestern Bell as well as some of the local radio stations and sales to get the experience, like he's talking about. And so I came back home. Started as a financial advisor, sales manager, and then uh, branch manager. I'm going to ask you all. Does anybody have any questions? I have a question. Okay, this is for the panel. So, any one of y'all, the uh, way y'all work, do y'all offer insurance? Okay. It depends on what your definition of intern is. Because um, <clears throat> I couldn't say that I don't. I am giving, uh, I'm extending an invitation to a young lady that goes to Stephen F. Austin. I know this is Karen, but she came and she asked. You guys, you, you're welcome to do the same thing. She has an interest in the car business, and she said she would like to manage a dealership. And she said um, she wants to work for the summer and kind of get acclimated. So I gave her a job part-time managing my website. And so she updates all my service specials, my sales specials, all of my internet stuff and graphics while she's in school and then during the summertime, she comes in and I train her how to sell and so she's gonna work on the sales floor. So yes, in that event, I can do, I can work around it. Depends on what your goal is. Depends on what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to accomplish. You can sit down and talk about opportunities like that if you're interested. Are you talking about when you say internship, um, going to college and, and working as well? Um, we don't necessarily have that exactly. Um, but, you know, we're open to, to try all kinds of things. We're, we run it like a mom and pop a little bit, but we're a $100 million a year business. So, uh, we, you know, we keep all the doors open. You know, if there's somebody who wants to come in and we think they're dynamic enough, then we may uh, switch it up. The lady that you were talking about, those are the kind of people that we like to see walk in the door. She wants to be the owner of a dealership. She has obviously researched the business and is hungry to learn the business. Those are the kind of people that you want to see walking through the door. Um, are y'all all juniors, seniors, sophomores? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the time to take advantage. And th that's what these opportunities are really good for is to like that lady who came to you. I mean. This is what this is for. This is for you. I'm assuming um, you are looking. Or who has their perfect job right now? May graduate. You do. Okay. Well, you're good. One out of maybe 20 people in here. So this is your opportunity to network and to ask those questions. Um, they may not be in the field that you're looking for, but tailor your questions into what. Um, how does this work for you? Or what can they do to help me get to achieve my goals? Um, like he said, he may not have an opportunity, but he may be able to put you in the hands of someone who could give you that opportunity. So think about it, what, you know, I know this is kind of bad, but what's in it for you? I mean, think about how they're, how they can help you. Because they're here to help you. So any questions um, from that? That's good. Um, I shared last time I had the opportunity to sit on a panel like this here, that your network is your net worth. Um, and that's a pretty good nugget, nugget that I think you should guys should take home. I took that home once when I was um, in college, and I never forgot it. And the people that I've been able to meet because of things like this, and seminars and other opportunities that I took advantage of in other places, I can pick up the phone, and if 
I just need a question or if I have, you know, uh, interest in some real estate in Atlanta. And um, I hear that, you know, there's some pretty good things and I can make an investment there and profit, you know, yield a 12% or 13% return. I know the right people that I can pick up the phone and call and say, I need you to lock that down for me. I can't get out there for another month or so. Can you take care of this? That's what this is all about. It may not be the industry that you're interested in, but it might be the people that you know that know somebody else. You see what I'm saying? So, definitely. So and, my, and my network actually consisted of uh, fraternity people. I went to a fraternity here at Lamar, and, um, and so my network was, consisted of the fraternity here, which is actually how I got into my business. And, um, and then, of course, now they're spread out all over the place, and you have those connections. Uh, in all kinds of businesses now. So there's a lot of opportunities. Any questions? You guys are just here for the extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of mentioned earlier, Mike, that you said that that's who you're looking for, someone who's actually going to, um, who is hungry uh, to learn and um, for a job. I guess going on that, what, what exactly do you all look for um, when you're hiring? He wants, I would say 95% of the people I've hired or are interviewed in Texas Tech, as well as here, have no clue when they walk in what the job is, what my company is, and more importantly, what they want to do in life. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me what you want to do. And automatically, I just cut them out. Before you do anything, when you go on an interview, research the company that you're going to talk to. Know the type of corporation or, like if you're going to go to the dealership, you know, he knows as far as, uh, know the business. If you can, get some experience, even if you have to work for free in that industry, A, to see if you like it or not, but B, it's a great story to tell that, hey, I didn't, when I was in radio, I wanted to get in sales because I knew how to get sales. I did it for free. I told them I was commission only, and I busted my tail, and they finally gave me a salary, but those are the things that you need to be able to do when, when you're going out and applying for a job. Anything either one of y'all look for specifically or something that stands out that you can think of? Uh, well, well, when I interview somebody, um, I like to look at you know, one question. You know, um, it kind of insults me if we set up a time to get together and talk and you come in with some tennis shoes and some jeans on. Okay. Absolutely. Um, you know, you try to look professional. You don't have to have a suit and tie on, but if you have some nice doctors, you know, button up shirt, you know, try to come in. And and then, um, as, as uh, he just mentioned, make sure when you come in that you know something about what it is that you're wanting to interview for. You know, you may not know the product. You might not be the expert that we train when it comes to that sort of thing. But at least have a good idea or concept of what it is that you're going to be doing and, and have vision. I'd like to help you guys. Here's what I'd like to add. You know, businesses like to look at assets, not liabilities, and they see their employees as assets. So if you come um, and you're looking to, you know, find out what you can take from the business, how much might I get paid? You know, or you know, how many hours am I going to have to put into this? Or whatever the case is, you're not coming in with the right attitude. You want to come in with the attitude of I'm going to come in early, stay late. Um, I'm going to earn whatever it is that I make. You know, sometimes you might have to start off working for free. I was a fully commissioned salesperson. You wanna know why? I was so successful, here's a secret. When I was uh, in college and I sold cars, my dad did not let me have a guarantee. Most salespeople get a guarantee of like $1,500 or $2,000 a month. I didn't, if I didn't sell anything, I didn't make anything, period. So I didn't eat. <laughs> so it was very important to me to go there with the mission. And I usually had two to three appointments already lined up and ready to go because that was the only way I was going to be able to put some gas in my tank to get to school so I could uh, study. So with that being said, when you have that right attitude, things will happen for you. So I hope that helps. For me, you know, we look for, um, you know, really good personality, outgoing personality. That's important. Um, and drive. I mean, that's something that you can really instill in somebody. It's hard. I mean, you either have it or you don't. And um, so that's important to us is drive, personality, uh, somebody who, as, as they both said, 
wants to, want to put into the business and not just suck from the business. That's important. And then my um, my president of my company actually did uh, wrote an article on uh, kind of do's and don'ts of interviewing and stuff like that. So if y'all want a copy of that, it's a lot of very common sense stuff, but you should pay attention. It's simple stuff like Facebook and you know what your uh, email address is. You know you have something crazy as your email address, and you go in for an interview, and they're going to know. If you go somewhere uh, that's a very big and professional business, they're going to know all about you uh, when you go in. And you know, if you have bootylicious at something.com, <laughs> that's, that's, probably, that's, probably that's probably not going to be you know good a good deal. So anyway, if y'all want some of these, are very very good, very common sense stuff, but but good stuff, nevertheless. The sad thing about this is y'all are going to bust your tail for four years to get a degree, and all that will get you is two minutes in front of people like me. And it's what you give us in those two minutes on whether or not it doesn't, doesn't matter really the GPA. Anybody can get a good GPA, but you can't be a good person for that fit. It's those two minutes that you have to impress us and show us that you care and you want to get the job is what makes it. That's why the interviewing process is so important and to prepare for that. I'd like to add to that with the resume piece. Um, I've seen some college students that have two pages or three pages, a long list of activities and things that you've done. A lot of that is good, but it's not really relevant uh, unless it's dealing with that industry that you're applying you know, to, to get a job for. Um, so I limit it to one page and just put some big bullet points because individuals that are sitting at, on this panel, you know, they're, 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 we're busy, okay? We're doing things all day long. You just heard kind of a brief synopsis of what we do every day. And so when I get a resume, I'm not going to sit there and actually study that resume. I'm going to look at it, and in 30 seconds, I'm going to make a decision on if I'm going to call this person back and, and, and interview them or not. So if I have three pages, I'm, I'm going to look at the first page, and I'm probably going to be done. So I'm just giving you some advice there. You might consider doing that if you're just now getting started. Um, and, uh, you know, just kind of look at that. Spark a question with anybody. There are websites that you can get a professional resume done for about 100 bucks. Don't do it on your own. We have, like you said, I've seen some really bad resumes. One in pencil. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'll go with if, um, if you could start all over and change any, was it, is there anything that you would change maybe in your job search, maybe in your job, going to school, is there anything that you would change? You turn back time. Maybe start looking for a job sooner. Well, since he's got longer to turn back the clock. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I enjoy the aspects of the people that I hire, which is helping people with their finances. That is, a, is an excellent job, mm -hmm. and, and you feel good about helping people. Now, the administrative part, doing the regulatory, that's not so fun, but you know, it is what it is. But no, um, getting the experience that I did, along with the degree, uh, I had to have done that. I wouldn't be here today. Kind of like what these two gentlemen have done. I can't think of anything. Okay, no worries. I have found my job. You guys, you'll need to. Quiet bunch. All right, let me go through. What salary ranges? Yeah. How many? Can I ask how many have actually done an interview, a job interview? Okay, how did it go? Good. Are you working there now? <laughs> That'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. So is that the job in your field that y'all y'all interview with? Is it the job in your field? So then when y'all graduate, you will not be looking? Maybe? So I'm curious. So there, I don't know. Oh, go ahead, Clay. What is it that you guys do? Because you guys are pretty excited about your jobs. Me? Yeah. I work in childcare. Okay. I've been in childcare for 30 years, and I absolutely love it. I mean, I got hired on at the one I'm in at now in August, and kind of fell into it through connections, and got hired on because I have director's boxes already for daycare, and Right, so are you going to launch your own? You're going to have a big Eventually, yeah. but that's still, you know, a couple of years down the road, but 
Yeah. So you can ask questions on, you know, he's a phone company. How do I get started? Or do you have any tips? The, yeah, I've been asking tips through, because I've worked out of daycare previously, and then I've asked tips through them, and the one I work at now. And then I have a couple of family members in child care also. So. Good. So, you know, yeah, and it helps to continue to grow, because you never know. You might have somebody who might be part of it, you know, give mm -hmm. us some kind of creative thing that, you know, idea that they couldn't put to, get to work because they're so busy doing what they're doing in their industry. But the only piece to that is, doing what you're doing, but never limit yourself with who you want to actually get some other information or ideas on. You know? But that's great. I hope you do well with that. I wish you great success. Sorry, you had a question? Yeah, um, how many times have uh, each of you like changed your job like since uh, you graduated? Zero for me. Yeah. I, I graduated and stayed where I was at. Had opportunities to go into the financial services industry. Uh, but work my way up in the company I'm in now. Well, um, I mentioned this earlier. Um, I graduated and went to banking, and then I shifted gears and I came back to the car business, which is the business that I'm in here in college. So, flex. I've been here ever since. Uh, three times. I actually have an industrial technology degree that I got first, and that got me to working for Phillips Petroleum, and I decided I did not want to sit on a boiler all day. So I came back and got my marketing degree, Southwestern Bell, and then in the financial field. Great, good question. Anybody else? Okay, I know you mentioned, um, call me about your, um, I'm just asking for the culture of your environment. So you're just kind of relaxed because you're doing a lot of fun. Any, are, are you, the company as far as that you're next to with or can you do it at home or what's the environment? No, ours is, uh, we have a facility that we work from. You can't work at home. And um, uh, what kind of environment we have? Uh, it's very, very relaxed. The, you know, a lot of A personalities that uh, are driven that want to, you know, make money. It's a commission sales job. Um, and That's the environment, the culture. Repeat that question. What's the culture like? Oh, the culture? Uh, well, it's kind of laid back at my store. It's different from Chevrolet. It's a, my company is new. Um, a lot of people don't even, are not familiar. Are you guys familiar with Subaru by the show of hands in this room? A few people? Um, it's fairly new in this area. It's only been established for about three years. So it's, pretty, it's been a pretty good experience for me. Um, but uh, the culture is more laid back nationally and so we try to mirror that culture in southeast Texas so it's not sell 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 driven it's not you know hardcore we um you know the, the the three individuals that I have that are involved in sales they can take you from point A all the way to point B in the sales experience they don't have to go back and forth to a manager and pencil in a deal I don't do that I let I train them to where they can handle their deal from the, the walk around presentation all the way down to working numbers with you and to financing and warranty options and then the final delivery piece. So it's more laid back. A lot of customers enjoy that. They appreciate that experience. Um, and then with my service and parts, uh, it's, it's like family. Um, some of you guys might be familiar with some of my testimonial commercials that I'm running. Uh, most of my customers, 95% of them, use the word love and family. Which, is, which was not by design or plan, we didn't plan to do it. But they know who we are, we know them by the name, they know us by their, by their name, and it's growing. It's a growing community, and so it's more of a laid back, you know, um, very, very um, pristine, I guess I could say, if I use that word, uh, culture. So, yeah, that's it. We're professional, but being in Beaumont, we're a little bit different than some of the other big city uh, brokerage houses, so we are a little bit backward. Well, not backwards, but just we're more low key as far as here in Beaumont. Um, did you get to choose a Subaru or uh, you know that was like one of the few options as well? Good question. Um, yeah, how we came up with Subaru? We actually we go. To, you guys familiar with the EA? Have you have you ever looked up your car, your value on like? Kelly Blue Book or NADA, 
Well, they have uh, big conferences every year, and so it's important that dealer and operators all over the country kind of get together with manufacturers and business. Well, we visited with Subaru for the last eight years, and believe it or not, Subaru hasn't been represented in this part of the country in over 13 years. And they were looking for a consistent dealer that had great CSI, which is Customer Satisfaction Index, and uh, that you know knew how to do some volume. Which JK Chevrolet for a while we were you know, number one. We still we still go back and forth now with classes and some other dealers, but we've been number one for a long time. So they looked at us and we looked at them, and we kind of just got married, and, and uh, so we've been kind of enjoying the experience. So yeah. Do you have plans on expanding to other car manufacturers? Yeah, we always keep those options open. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, we, there was a newer uh, manufacturer that just came to the area. I don't want to mention the name, but one of you, you guys would be familiar with it because they just launched it in Bowman off of Interstate 10, and they just built a nice facility for it. We were actually uh, trying to get that stored. Um, and uh, because of the organization uh, and their relationship that they have, they kind of beat us to the punch um, because of uh, their national relationship because they got a uh, huge chain of stores and so they were the ones that if they wanted it they could have it if they didn't they passed on it we would have got it but uh but we're, we're always looking for opportunities you know we're never going to turn them down it's the right one for this area I'm just curious, how important is it for a person you're interviewing to have interned in the position that they're applying for? For people like me that say, like, I've had the same job for four years at a restaurant, and I do really good at the job that I have, so, and, and I have to work to get through school, and my parents don't pay for, like, you know, my car and all that stuff, so I don't have time to intern in anything that has to do with my major. When I'm done with school, what I have to have a chance to intern? It's not going to be a big deal when I apply for a job and they look on my resume and there's like no internship, you know, time on there at all. Like how big of a deal is that? No. It, to me, if you show me that you not only went to school, but you handled another job, put on there whatever you do, tell us in a paragraph or less, Something that shows that you worked your way up, you know, some of the things that you accomplished there. To show that you go the extra mile in whatever you do. And then you can show us that when you're interviewing with us, I didn't get a chance to get into this field, but I know all about it, and this is what I'd like to do. Um, I, I guess I'll, I'll add to that. I'm not one, I mean, I've, I've hired a lot of people from other industries. It's, it's more attitude. You know? Yeah. I was curious because I thought about what if you have like one person that say maybe they never even had a job but they, they got to enter in their senior year of college and then you have another applicant that wasn't able to enter at all but they've held the job for a long time and they obviously could keep the job, you know, though it's going to make a big deal or a big difference. I don't think it makes a big difference. Okay. I think it's the impression you give. And, um, you know, for, for sales, it's about, um, you know, really we would rather you not have interned. Uh, I mean, in sales you don't really have a lot of people that intern in sales, but we'd rather you not have had a sales position uh, because, you know, you're going to have developed a lot of bad habits and then we're going to have to break those bad habits and mold you into something uh, else which takes more time. But that's, that's sales. That's different than some other things. You can be an intern at what you want to do and still suck at your job. It depends on point. how you do your job. That's a good point. And you have to relay that to us through the conversation. What's your major? Marketing. Okay. That's such a lot. No, that's all I was curious because I know a lot of people and they've told me I, there's really nothing you can do to intern for that job. You can say, you know, you work at a place where you sold things or, you know, say you're a server. That could theme of something with marketing because there's things that you have to be able to sell and you have to be able to be good at that. You market yourself. But, that's right. right. And that's what I've heard too. That is, that's a tip that I've gotten from a lot of people is you have to be able to market yourself as a person and for the job. The best interview you can give 
is normally when you go into an interview, we are asking all the questions and we're putting you on the defensive. The best people I've ever seen turn it around and make it where why should I work for you? Tell me about your, your plan as far as on how can you make me the best that I can be, your 401k. How do you compare to Merrill Lynch, UBS? What are your platforms compared to theirs? Turn it around while I'm on the defensive. Shows when you've done your homework, you know what you're talking about, and you know what I want to talk to you. Good question. Great question. Anybody? Okay, I have a question. Um, I know you said you're open to like internships, two of you, and then you don't have it, but are you currently hiring for any positions? If so, or if not, are there any particular um, areas that y'all um, look for? Uh, that maybe come open more um, often than others, or? We are, we're hiring for sales positions. I mean, we have all kinds of positions. Uh, we outsource to, we outsource to our human resources, but um, outside of that, we have all kinds of positions. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm over sales and manager, sales manager, so, uh, and we're always hiring for sales, you know, uh, and when it comes to commission sales, there's, can be a high turnover rate. Uh, depending on people, whether they can cut it or not, whether they're good at it, whether they have drive or not. So, um, but we have all kinds of positions from shipping, you know, shipping out uh, coins all over the U.S. to uh, marketing to, uh, like I said, we outsource our human resources. Um, I am hiring for a sales position, but I'm not really always looking. And the reason is I'm fortunate. Pretty savvy to be in that position because you have to be willing to adapt to the cells going in and out of the elements, but then also having that clean intellect where you can actually you know, discuss financial interest rates and what's going on in the markets. We have um, Subaru particularly, it attracts such a unique customer. We have a lot of college professors here that come to buy Subarus. Um, we have engineers, you know, that are very the way the product is designed, and then we have a lot of professionals, you know, doctors, attorneys, and so on and so forth that want to look for a nice quality car that's going to last, it's not going to cost them so much on maintenance. So you have to be able to communicate that effectively and share, you know, what distinguishes your, your product from others. And um, so that's what, that's what I'm looking for, you know, somebody who's wanting to be in a position for a long time, you know, I'm looking for long term. assistant sales manager for me uh, for two years. He made $74,000 last year and, um, you know, he does everything that I'm talking about right now and, and I trained him, hired him from a pump all the way up. You know, he, he retired from at and and he wanted a sales position. He kind of, you know, just, you know, work and he's, I think his name is like 45, he retired pretty early. But he can, he loves talking to his customers. More importantly, um, he loves people, so it's nothing for him to go and hang out and have a beer with his customer after work, or you know, see him on the weekend, or you know, flying with one of his customers because you know, he's on anger. You know, so I mean, this is the kind of experiences that you're looking for, you know, um, in that in that particular uh, where I am. So, yeah, I am hiring. I'll answer that question. I'm looking for one to two financial advisors. Uh, we're kind of strict on who we look for. You have to have one to two years outside sales experience, been in the military, or have owned your own business. Uh, failure rate the first two years in our industry is about 64% nationwide. It's not an easy job. Sales as a whole is not an easy job. I guess we are. Since we're on the subject of sales, uh, my name is Nia Dowling. My head of major is human resources, but um, I'm working right now as a full commission salesperson. Uh, do you believe that a great salesperson, are they born or are they made? And yeah. if they're made, what are the best resources that I can use to grow? That's a great question. Um, I believe there's some that are natural. They're just natural. 
Um, and and then we've made some really, really good salespeople. Uh, about half of our campus made six figures. Um, of that, half of those probably made 200 or better. And we have uh, a, a couple or maybe three that have made half a million. So the salary in sales can be extreme, but it is what, what you put in. And then some of those came from, like I said before, no sales experience whatsoever. Um, and they have been molded into great salespeople. Um, but then there's some that walk through the door that you're like, wow, okay. I mean, just very effortless. And, um, you know, over the phone, it's important because all you have is your voice. You know, we can't show them the coins, although they can look on the internet on our website, but we can't show them anything. It's all through your voice. So you have to be, you have to be able to get someone excited. You have to be able to meet somebody over the phone and have them like you. And some of that is very, is, is based on personality. And your and and you know how natural you are at that. Um, if you're an introvert or you're or or you have trouble talking to people, uh, then then you're going to probably struggle with that. But um, I think both. I think you can you can <coughs> take some really good salespeople, uh, and they don't know what they have sometimes. If you have a fan, I've got some resources. Um, one of the ones. Ziggler, Jim Rohn, uh, was also very good for me um, as far as motivation, structure, organization, <coughs> business plan, that kind of thing. Bless you. And uh, you sleep with your coffee. <laughs> so, <coughs> so um, and then um, also some others, uh, Dell Carnegie Institute. You know, uh, if you have an opportunity, go online, look that up. They have um, some things that they do uh, locally in Houston and Lake Charles. some of these and they'll help you out, you know, Toastmasters, they'll kind of help you effectively speak and communicate and then that, that key element though goes all the way back to your question, how to get your, your name, what you were talking about, the restaurant business. Oh, uh, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Um, let me tell you, the service part of that, you know, if you get great tips, then that's a clear indication that you have a pretty bright future in sales. And the reason being is you take care of your customers and at the end of the day, I don't care what industry you're in. If you're taking care of the people that, that come and they do business with you, they'll spread your name like wildfire. And more people will come and more people will come. And if you continue to do that at a high level, and you'll see the success. It, it's, it's just above and beyond. You know, it's limitless. So. Well, so that's why I was worried because unfortunately I'm not a Dharma hostess, but I've been head hostess for four years now. And in that, some people may not look at it as a big deal, but it is because you get to be the one that runs the other girls. And you apparently are able and capable of handling both angry customers and happy customers that, you know, you want them leaving satisfied and all that stuff. And I've worked in two different restaurants, but the same restaurant could solve grass in both this location and back at home where I live. And the reason I was worried is because I've heard some people say that it's better to have had different jobs, but then I've heard that it's better to have been able to stay faithful to one job and not having lost it. You know, not been fired from it and all. That's why I was concerned that's, about that because I've just had one job my whole life. That's true. Uh, you don't want, you know, setting up rules can be a, can be a little bit of a, a weight to an anchor. So be careful with that. You really want to follow what's in here, your gut feeling. If you think that there's a better opportunity somewhere else, don't say, well, I don't want If it's something that you really feel that you want to do, go after it, you know, and, and it's not work if you enjoy what you do, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what you want to find, you want to find what you're really passionate about, like the two young, uh, you got a couple, I just want to say that, or the two people that we have sitting right there that have found their, their niche um, with uh, the child care industry, oh, okay. they've got a passion. I'm not a child care. Oh, okay, I'm oh, sorry, I thought that both of you guys were speaking together when you said that, so what are you in? Retail. You're in retail? Oh, what kind of you? Oh, for H-E-B. Okay. 
Well, when you find your passion, like it seems like you guys both found, then you're not really working. You just you go to work and you look forward to doing it. Am I wrong about that? Yeah. 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 Well, I, love <laughs> I, I love what I but, do. And, and we're great. That might be an opportunity that you want to stay with them. But uh, if it's not, you know. And, and the reason you've heard both, just because it depends on who you're interviewing with. I mean, you know, somebody, depending on who you're, who you're, who you're going to interview with, may like the fact that you've held down the same job. And again, they're going to make it's going to be a first impression. And if you're a hostess, then you're probably really good at making a good first impression. So that's important. And then um, you know it's going to depend on them. And if they, you know, some some people who are interviewing may not like the fact that you've gone from job to job to job, and that may send off a red flag. But they're still going to make, um, you know, a, they're still going to make their judgment based on what you do in the interview process. It's how you tell your story. You were telling your story pretty good on what you do. You had pride in it. You talked about your job description. That comes across in the interview. Sure. So it, it all depends on how you tell it. Okay. Do okay. you have a question? Okay, I'm going to ask one more question before we uh, wrap this up. Um, can, any, or can each one of you maybe say uh, with a good tip for them before we end the, the panel? Or do you have any tips? Let them know. Well, I have a whole page of stuff right here, but um, a little side note for college folks that need money. Um, Pre-1965 silver, uh, quarters, dimes, and nickels are worth about 20 to 25 times face value. So if you have any old change and you, instead of just giving, you know, 50 cents, it could be worth, you know, 10 bucks. So pay attention to your, I know that's kind of weird, but your old change is actually 90% silver. It's worth, it's got silver in it. So that might be good for some of y'all. That's just my tip. So, um, aim high and big. Uh, whatever you guys decide that you want to do, you know, do it with all your might, all your power, all your strength. And focus, you know, stay committed to it. Don't let anybody tell you what you think and not do. And that's, that's the only thing that can get for anybody else. Practice before you go to the interview. Practice, practice, practice. Okay. That's good. All right. Well, then we'll go ahead and end here now. Thank you um, all for taking time on your busy day to participate in our panel. Okay, that's it. You guys, uh, make sure that you um, sign out, scan out before you leave. Thank you.